Good afternoon. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Carl Spencer. I'm a Realtor in Hilo, and I'll be the instructor this afternoon. This afternoon's class is MAPS 2, a continuation of this morning's class. We're going to be going over, the first part of it is going to be what is included in the full MLS fees, like almost everything in this morning's class. And then we'll be going into the tax maps. The tax maps need to be purchased by the company. If you as an individual decide to purchase the tax maps, you would get them as well as everybody else in your company. So it's uh, one fee for the whole company annually. It's cheaper than the books, but uh, you don't have a piece of paper to hold. If you have any questions for me, a control panel opened up, a few icons and an arrow. You click on the arrow. It'll expand out the box. There'll be a place to type in your question and send it to me. Okay, we'll start by putting in our search. And opening the map. Oh, it could be a new subdivision. Some properties do not have a map location. The mapping system is done basically the same as everybody else once they all come out. A brand new subdivision won't necessarily get into our system right away. We're going to click the Layers and Legends button. And the first is standard. And it's not telling you this right now, but you have to zoom in in order to realize anything from that layer. And you can tell this by looking at the legend underneath. Click on the plus, and it gives you a breakdown of what the colors are supposed to mean. And of course, here there is a lot of gray, which means it's nothing is based on what the state has coded for those properties. Satellite imagery. We have two overhead imageries now, the satellite imagery plus an aerial. This looks a little bit fuzzier than the aerial imagery. And it does seem to get a little pixelated when you get a little closer. One of the things you'll also see is this is supposed to be in the middle of the road over here. And these lines, of course, should be over in here, not through the structures. This does not mean that those pro the road's in the wrong place or that the structure's encroaching on another property. What it means is the camera lens is fine in the middle and as you get further to the edges it becomes a little more distorted and it's very hard to overlay images onto a ruler written map. Tax maps I'm going to skip because that's later in the class. Colored plat maps. There are only a limited number of colors in the rainbow, so you will run into a few colors being same or similar. But now you have the complete tax key. You 
colored subdivisions. To me, they're not necessarily subdivisions as areas on the tax map. Fire response zone. You do have a legend here, and you'll notice the colors are coded for multiple islands. And you have to get way out here in order to find a second fire response group. Flood zones. The last I knew, we still didn't have the most current flood maps. They haven't been digitized so that we can get them onto our system. Way, 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 way back, uh, there used to be a flood zone D in Hawaii, which there was also throughout the U.S. Flood zone D meant no flood study has ever been done. When the banks on the other 48 and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac started buying mortgages over here. They would not buy a mortgage or do a mortgage over here without there being a flood study. Back then, all the people that did flood studies were in the other 48, which meant it cost more for a flood study than it did for the property. Even though everybody argued that, now wait a minute, you know, this property is on the side of a mountain above the ocean. There is no way it's ever going to flood. They would not back off. Someplace along the line, D became X. If you see X, that does not necessarily mean a flood study has been done. And it does not necessarily mean there won't be any flooding. X500 on the maps means there was a flood study done, but it still doesn't mean no flooding. Flood insurance companies only have a problem with your A's. And as you see, we have a legend here. Most of the flood zones are around waterways, lava hazard zones. We have three and eight. Lava hazard zones were not done by a surveyor. There is no guarantee as far as what the zone could be. On the Big Island, the Civil Defense reports on what the flood uh, lava zone is. If a property is right on the border, they will say they don't know. And whoever is going to make that decision will probably be the insurance company because they're the ones that make us use that. These maps came from volcanologists seeing high <clears throat> resolution shots of the earth from way up in the air and they saw cracks. They circled the cracks and said, that's our number one concern. Our, we could possibly have lava come up through there. And they kept on going until they hit nine. Greatest hazard all the way down to the least hazard. Most insurance companies will insure lava zone three and up. They don't want to reserve uh, do one and two, except for the Hartford. The Hartford won't do three either. One and two can receive insurance. They have to go through the state program. You get rejected by an insurance company. You go through the state program, and then the same insurance company will turn around and give you insurance because it's guaranteed by the state of Hawaii. Two 
PIT code. That is a state designation of land use. And when you get in tighter, some, some of it will be knowledgeable, 200 for apartment. Again, we have a legend. And lastly is zoning districts. We have a legend here as well. But regretfully, all the legend is, is it tells you what color has what code, and it doesn't tell you what you can put on the property. Some of them are basically self-explanatory. Explanatory. 7.5 single family, well, 7,500 square foot single family residence. Not the size of the residence, the size of the land. The biggest problem is commercial. You need to contact the county to find out what can be put on that property. We don't have it in our files. We only get the zoning changes once a year and we get them from the tax office which means it could delay it if you have a concern check with the appropriate department let's go back to standard and since i'm close enough we'll call up aerials Nice thing about aerials is the fact you can take a look at the, the school campus. It will help you. <laughs> Sorry, can't just seem to get the right area locate a property maybe based on this piece of vacant land. I don't know how often these get updated. You'd have to check with HIS. Let's see, another thing on the list would be Did I go too far? Nope, not far enough. Here's Hilo Hospital and the VA Center. But you'll notice right now, I, I backed it off. You have to be in close to see that. There's a few of them that are that way. Next on our list is annual rainfall. We have the reverse situation with this. You gotta be further out in order to be able to see the lines. There should be another one right over there, but my control panel covers it. Contour lines. This area isn't too bad. Where you run into your biggest headaches are around the waterways or the gulches, which point you have to zoom in in order to be able to follow the lines because a lot of times they're really close together. Elementary school districts. This one you got to back off again. Oops, let's take contour off. To see where and what school is in which area. If you have a property close to a border, you might want to call the DOE to find out what district it's in. OK, 
Okay, I zoomed in a little bit so we could do fire stations. There is a fire station there and one up here. But if you back off, if you get away from it, they're gone. Ah, I do that so many times. I bump these stupid letters down here. Trying to click on the arrow. Next is high school districts. And sometimes you need to get further away on that in order to see the districts. They're surrounded by green lines. Again, the DOE, if you're not sure. Highway mile markers. These come in handy. If somebody asked how far out of town they are, you could call this up if they're fairly close to a highway and tell them which district, well, I mean, not which district, oh, mixing up one question with the next. Um, mixing up the zero points. See three up here, you go, where in the world is that three from? That's from over here. These two O's start for down this direction. This highway, Highway 19, when it was originally built, the end of it was in the old Hilo Airport, which means not the zero and not either one of these zeros go along with the three. It's the zero way over here. Street names, and we have that one defaulted on our system. I told this in the morning class, you can set it up however you want. You pick all of your choices that you want down here. You pick out one of the base layers and then click up here, save as default. They tried to find a street map that would overlay with our system and couldn't find one. So they took the time to do it by hand, transfer all the street names onto our maps. If you know a street name is wrong, let HIS know. They're only human. If you see one that where all the streets around it are named but one isn't, and you know the name of the street, notify HIS. There aren't many historic lava flows. The easiest way for me to locate them is to zoom way out. It's over here. There's flows before it and there's flows after it, but these are the only ones they have. And if I recall, there is a legend. I do forget to sometimes show these legends. It's saying it's showing the flow from 61, but up oh, here it is. Hospitals. This one does not seem to work in this area. I showed you the picture of the hospital. Oop, too far up the hill. This is where the hospital is. It's checked. I take the check mark off. It's still there. 
It probably works on Oahu, but does not work here as far as this hospital, as far as the one Kau. I haven't checked all six. Next, we have house numbers. You will find properties that don't have house numbers. They could be vacant land. They could be the fact that this number is creating a zone around it, which then turns around and the house numbers don't go in. Also, there could be multiple houses with multiple numbers on one property. Which one do you pick? But the house numbers should give you assistance in finding properties. Lifeguard towers, I'm not going to waste your time. I have not been able to find any on this island. They're probably on Oahu without any problem, but I have not been able to find any so far on this island. Parcel numbers. That's what these little blue numbers are in all the pieces of property. Public school locations. Now this one has kind of become a little bit redundant. Here we have Hilo Elementary in green. What happened to Hilo High Schools? You see the little green dots. If I take it off, it takes off the green letters. Over here was probably interfered by this, and it takes off the green dot, but they're already marked. Put back, there they are. When you're working with the system, you have to be careful what things that you put on. I just put two on. Can you tell which one's which? Probably not. I got a question. Can you drop the pin on those? Since I wasn't looking, I'm not used to looking on the left side because that's where I've got my control panel right now. I missed that. You're probably talking about the ones without the addresses. Uh, yes, you can. You can take the pin and set it on any property while the map is open. Make sure that you don't put too many things on. Because the next thing that I was supposed to do is special management, I'll take tsunami off. Here is special management. This particular area has hash marks. Some of them only have the banner that says special management. And it doesn't really tell you what area is covered besides what's under the banner. That's because we have a problem with the water department working with us. They refuse. We ask them, where are the wells? Where are the aquifers so we can map them? They refuse to give us that information because they're afraid somebody will sabotage them. If you see one of these banners or you see the hash marks, there's multiple different things that could be going on there. It could be as minimalistic as a larger setback. It could be you can only build so tall, or you can't cut certain trees down. But it can be as drastic as where the main aquifer on this island is. You're not allowed to cut a blade of grass. About all you're allowed to do is walk on the property. One moment. They don't want anything to leach down into the aquifer. They won't let you build a house, and but they still want you to pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we have subdivision names. Again, to me, it's not necessarily subdivision as it is uh, identification on tax map. I was looking to see if there was a legend because I know there's two or three in here and I think I've only pointed out one. Tsunami evacuation area. That is not inundation area. And I know that for a fact because this area up here has uh, homes built up there back in the 40s and this area never got hit, even the ones at sea level, when the big tsunamis hit Hilo. Problem is there's a bridge up here, there's a bridge down here. If both of those bridges get damaged by storm surge, there is no way to access this area. And you go, but there's a road right there. That road isn't open. Like a lot of different things, there's a lot of roads on maps that don't go where they say they go. There's a barrier across that that could be removed. And we tried to convince the county of that, at least instead of being a solid barrier, make it a opening barrier that can be opened in case of an emergency. But they won't do it. Zip code boundaries. This is another weird one. A zip code is the number on one building. That's the post office building that that number is attached to. Any mail delivery going out of that one building gets that zip code attached so the mail goes to the building and then they can distribute it. There are companies in the other 48 that mark identification and sorting of their properties that they have on their websites based on zip code. Here on the islands, a person turned around and said, okay, we'll make all of this area this zip code, all that area that zip code. Because they are actually wrong here in 96720, because 96721 is right in here. It's the number on the building, the federal building, that also has a post office in it. But we're stuck with it now. That way we can be on all the different websites. And I went in too far. There we go. Now in this morning's class, I told people that I would grab the measuring tool. Uh, first of all, I guess I need to, I was supposed to do that in two seconds, not now. Any questions at all on all the layers and legends, now would be the time to ask because I'm just about ready to switch over to tax maps. Okay, I clicked on the tax map button and you'll notice nothing happened. And that's because the tax map is up here. The tax map is a dig digital representation of the books that everybody has in their office. And if you check the scale on all those books, they're not the same on every page. 
now you have a subdivision like um, Hawaiian Paradise Park where there's about the same number of properties in every single plat, which means that every single plat is about the same size. And they probably, the tax map could be put side by side, but that is a unique case. The rest of the area, when the maps were originally drawn, they were drawn on monstrous pieces of paper. They wouldn't even fit on a desk, a large desk, not even a, not a regular desk, but not even a large desk. They had their own tables built. Well, it was decided that they were too hard to work with. <clears throat> so they reduced the size. And they reduced the size based on the map, not the scale. If they reduced them based on the scale, you could turn around and utilizing the scale, match them all up. Now they're a normal desktop size sitting in the county's office, and they got reduced again to 11 by 17, which is what most of us have in our offices. And they've been reduced again. I've seen them in eight and a half by 11, or eight and a half by 14. They reduced down better to eight and a half by 14. Okay, what I'm doing right now is trying to find a property that has a measurement on it. As I started to say before I brought them up, was the fact that I had told this morning's class that I would lay the measuring tool up alongside of them and show you how accurate it actually is. One of the things I like about these maps is the fact that you can zoom in until you can read it. And if you were looking for these couple of parcels, you'd have started in here someplace trying to find them, and they're up here. It locates the parcels for you. I'm going to switch to another area. Because I know this area has sizes. Yeah, this looks like about 76.08. 79. That's the biggest difference I've had yet. but they are fairly close. I was gonna measure this one, but it's got a curve on it. The area lower has better well, let's try this long one and see what it says. Two thirty eight point one five two thirty seven point eight zero. It's less than a foot longer. 
measuring tool is fairly accurate, accurate just use the words approximately. I came over to the dashboard because to show you that if you click on the tax map link, this is what it brings up. But you'll notice no flags. Could have sworn I changed that this morning. If you look down here, you've got the tax map. Click on that, and it does the same thing. One thing you need to remember is these maps are in TIFF format. They're very large format. If you're going to save them to your computer, and then email it as an attachment to your client. Make sure they're capable of opening TIFF formats, and they're capable of handling getting large files. Now we have download. You can download the entire map. One thing you always have to remember when you're doing anything and clicking on links, look for errors or permissions, are you allowed to do something? Again, it does not, anything you go, once you go out of HIS, you no longer have the flags. <clears throat> Second. Okay. Now, while you're in HIS, the flags are on the maps. If you use the functions inside of HIS, like telling it to copy, which takes what you have on the screen out, then the flags will be with it. But once you download or take the maps out of the system without utilizing HIS to do it, that ends it. I'm cracking up here. You can download the zone. And the section. Again, you can get these as large as you need to get them in order to be able to read them. A lot of the information on them is out of date because they realized, especially when growth started happening at a fairly rapid rate, it was hard to keep up changing names on the map. And lastly, the one that you're most interested in is the plat. About all you can do with this is rotate it. Otherwise, it's going to be sideways on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. This way, it'll fit a little better. And if you go to 8.5 by 14, it'll fit even better. You can zoom in again so you re can read it. But that's basically all you can do. The program that HIS used to have that you could really do a lot, manipulate the maps with, went away as computers got newer. The gentleman that wrote the program wasn't around anymore, and they didn't realize the way he had wrote it, it had a, like a drop dead on it. Once the programming, certain aspect of the programs changed, 
then the then that program no longer worked. But you can do things like go to open here and go to paint. Here you're going to have to use a slide bar down here to make it a little smaller. You have something on here you don't want them to know. You can pick up the eraser and erase it. You can take the pencil and circle something. There's a lot of different things. There's brushes that you can put different types of paint style on here. I don't know how to activate this fill. Uh, if you want to know all the things you can do with paint, you're going to have to take a class on paint. I'm not even sure of everything on it since we just got kind of thrown into this. You can write on there and everything else. Down under settings, tax map file preference. You click on that, and it's do you want to let HIS use that viewer for you to look at it? Or do you want to use your own program? And basically, when you want to use your own program, when you go to open it, and it says do you want to open or save, you want to save. That way you can open your program and open that file. There are a lot of different programs out there. Uh, nobody has settled on one that would be the best to use or if they're going to write a new one. We have any other questions? I think I've covered everything I'm supposed to cover. I'm, let, let me double check and make sure. The two classes together are over three hours. And they decided they wanted to cut back to smaller classes. And they neither one of them... Uh, you combine them, they're definitely over an hour and a half. Less than three hours, but over an hour and a half. And with the other program, you could also change slide and sizes. And you used to be able to do a lot of stuff, which made it a lot easier. That's it. That's all I've got for you. I'm looking for questions. What would I print up for a first-time buyer? Well, usually it depends on how novice they are. You know, even though people are sometimes their first-time buyers, they've been on the Internet, and they, they've done a lot of research. Eighty percent of the people out there, before they even knock on your door, have already been on the Internet and have already looked at properties on the Internet, which sometimes makes it difficult because people like Zillow don't keep their stuff accurate. And they call it, they call you up, I want to go see this house, and it was sold two years ago. Or it's no longer on the market. But uh, basically, I usually use brochures on each individual property. 
That way they have a few pictures. They've got some information about the property. And when you take them there, they can identify with it, make notes on it. If they're just after, depending on if they're using the internet or are they using printed, if they're using printed, uh, maybe the MLS one liner because it's got one picture, although a lot of people make those pictures useless. An MLS mid would give them additional information. But remember, anytime you're giving them any of this stuff, it's in customer format. Otherwise, they're liable to get the listers phone, phone number. If they're going online, just the one liner, if you're doing it via email, and then explain to them, they can click on the MLS number for more information. They can click on the tax key for more information, and on the camera for more pictures. There's, that's where they get the most information. Today's buyers seem to want to be information overload. Back 30 years ago, 40 years ago, agents would only give very limited information, which made the buyers come to them for additional information. Well, now that there's so much information on the internet, if you try to hold information back from them, they'll go to another agent that'll give them the information without any problem. And it's going to totally depend on the buyer. Uh, when you're turning around and starting to uh, try to price things, uh, you might look at the cloud CMA because the cloud CMA, you can put information in that to give them uh, what is a CMA, um, what it, about the process. You can give them your bio. You can give them your company's bio. You can add a lot of things to the cloud CMA. You could even do a cloud CMA with just actives and giving them all the additional information that you want them to get. So basically, I don't have a set practice. <laughs> I play the client by ear, depending on what, they're, what they like and how much information they've already got gleaned out of the system. Any more questions? You can leave if you have no questions. It's no problem. Click the X up there. One of the things always on the classes, since I've got a little bit more time than usual, is uh, after you get done with the classes, go out and use it, play with it. And if you don't understand it, go back next month. <laughs>